So whether it's um, what we're talking about now, whether it's math method, whether it's low heart rate, Norwegian method, doesn't matter what language you put around it, this idea of a lower heart rate approach seems to have captured the imaginations and the hearts of, of so many endurance athletes. Is that true? Have you noticed a rise in the last couple of years or is, is this something that sort of ebbs and flows out of fashion? You know, the training is always changing. This has been going on. You know, I've been around endurance sports now uh, since roughly 1973 or something like that. So I've got a big background and, and, and I've watched all kinds of things go on. I started out as a runner myself and took up triathlon and then, and then bike racing. And, and um, so I've seen a lot of things go become common that athletes did but never quite the same that we're doing right now. There was a period of time when we were doing a long, slow distance back in the 1980s. There was a period of long, slow distance that was going on, but it wasn't measured. And I really suspect people really weren't going slow. It just wasn't as fast as they wanted to go, but it was still too fast. Um, so it's a little bit different now because we can measure things now, whereas back then we couldn't really measure things. We didn't really know if you were... Uh, working on your metabolic fitness or not. We didn't know if it was coming along. We had no way of knowing that unless you went to a lab and spent a few hundred dollars to have a test done and then go back every six weeks and have it done again for a few more hundred dollars, which is nobody's going to do that. So consequently, uh, it is changing. Uh, it, it's now, it, it's the, the, the marriage is between low intensity and measurement which we can now do. And we can measure in all kinds of different ways. I talked about heart rate a while ago, which is the most, a very basic way of doing this. Most every runner has a heart rate monitor and you can use that as one way of doing it. But we can make it even simpler than that. If you want to make this really simple, if you want to know when you're really running at your metabolic rate, in other words, not too fast. If you want to know when you're there, I've got a really simple little thing for you. Count to 1,006 out loud without taking a breath. So it would be something like 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006. If you can do that, you're, you're working on metabolic fitness. If you have to take a breath before you get to 1,006, you, you're now burning sugar instead of, instead of fat. So that's, that's, all, that's a, it's not scientific, but it's kind of like what I've found just in working with athletes that it kind of works out to be around 1,006 if you, can, if you can count to 1,006 out loud without taking a breath, you're working on your metabolic fitness. If you can't get to 1,006, you're working on, you're, you're burning carbohydrate. You're burning glycogen for fuel. It's not nearly what you're trying to do. So, but heart rate's a better way of doing it, more precise. Even better way would be the lactate measurement. Um, there's a lot going on right now with measuring lactate to determine uh, in intensity and the athlete's response to intensity. Um, I expect sometime in the next few months, we'll have a, uh, a device that you can probably stick to your arm, uh, and it'll tell you real time on your wristwatch or even perhaps on your phone at first, what's your, what's your, uh, uh, uh current level of, of, of uh, intensity is based on lactate, how many millimoles of lactate are you burning right now? And you'll be able to look at your wrist and know what that number is. You know, that this is the direction we're going with this. I, I'm, I'm sure this is going to happen. It's just a matter of when it's going to happen. So we're, we're on the verge of having something which is going to change our perspective about intensity once again. In this case, it's going to be a very good thing, but there's always a downside to this kind of stuff, which I won't get into, but there's a downside to technology. Whenever there's a, a new technology, there's something that's, that's going to suffer because of that. But anyway, bottom line is we, you can measure your metabolic fitness quite nicely. But if you can just do the, th the EF thing I mentioned earlier, at the end of a workout, take your average speed divided by your average heart rate, watch that number over time and see what happens. Every time you do a workout that's supposed to be like zone two, see if that's what that number is. And what should happen over time is that number should be gradually going up, which tells you metabolic fitness is improving doesn't cost you any money at all to do that. All you got to do is have a calculator and you can figure out this number for yourself um, without having to go to the laboratory someplace to find out. So it's it's actually simple, 
but it can be very complex also. It's, it's very, very deep information I'm talking about here in scientifically, but at the user level, it doesn't have to be that way. You can make it simple. 